All right, guys, good morning. Welcome to FMT's webinar where we're talking about moving from GP to the cloud um, and how that can help your business. Super glad that you're here. We're going to give it another minute or so, maybe another 30 seconds before we get going. Um, pretty excited to have everybody on here. Lori, Peter, uh, Ray, super excited that you're on. Uh, we will be fielding questions towards the end of the webinar, but you don't have to wait for the end of the, the webinar for those questions to come up. Feel free to just post a question inside of the chat and we will get to it there um, towards the tail end of this. Um, but as a whole, again, thank you very much for showing up today. Uh, super excited to hear about this from uh, Chris Schofield and how moving from GP to the cloud can help your business. So Chris, uh, with that, go ahead and hop on and uh, she's all yours. Great, thanks Troy, appreciate it. Good morning everyone. Uh, like Troy said, we're going to review moving to the cloud um, for your GP application. Um, the first slide we look at right here in the morning is a uh, handsome devil, uh, that is not me. Um, we'll show my ugly mug later uh, and a couple more slides. But it is moving to the cloud um, and specifically uh, five ways uh, moving to your ERP cloud helps your business. So as we get started, um, we will look at who this webinar is for. Uh, the webinar is for CFOs and CFOs, VPs, directors and managers responsible for making an impact on enterprise technology decisions. It's a long ways to say, hey, if you're currently using GP and um, you're thinking about moving to the cloud, um, this webinar is for you. Um, it'll give you some great insights on what to expect, uh, some tips and tricks and pitfalls to look out for. So as well as who is this webinar not for, right? Companies who are not currently on Microsoft GP. Um, we are well equipped to help you. Um, Nick here at FMT can certainly get you in contact with um, one of our account executives. Uh, if you are looking for um, a new ERP system uh, or you're coming from an ERP system other than GP, maybe QuickBooks, uh, maybe NetSuite, maybe uh, a Sage product, um, feel free to reach out to Nick at uh, the email listed here in this slide, uh, and he'll be happy to help you. So our objective today is really to help you understand how moving to the cloud can help your business. And, and obviously moving to the cloud, specifically from a server-based application, um, there's a lot of pros and cons. There's a lot of information to gather, uh, a lot of understanding, um, and, and really it is what suits your specific business requirements and business needs. So we'll take a look at many of those objectives. As I stated before, uh, this is me. Um, worked at, here at FMT for a little over nine years now. Prior to that, another firm here in San Diego. Um, and even before that, I was an accountant. Uh, was able to work with the team from a client side to do implementations of Microsoft products. Um, and so throughout the years, I've had client experience as well as consulting experience on both ends of the spectrum. Um, quite a few projects under our belt, uh, most of them obviously here with FMT for the last nine years. So hopefully some of the information I have and some of the insights and examples I have had throughout my career will be able to enlighten us um, as we go through our, our webinar today. So a little bit of an agenda. Uh, we'll take a look at what happens if you don't move to the cloud. We'll look at the five ways of moving helps your business. We'll take a look at, are you ready to move? Um, that's probably one of the questions that is um, most commonly not asked of, of yourselves um, as you are business owners and VPs and, and directors uh, within your business. Are you ready to move? So that's an important question to ask. Some common mistakes, uh, of course, uh, any ERP implementation, there are pitfalls and we wanna be able to bring those out so that um, we all don't make those. And then some next steps at the end of the slide deck. So as we move through, uh, what we say is what happens if you don't move? Um, so there's plenty of 
of reasons or access uh, or things that happen if you don't move. Um, not only necessary bad, I mean, it could be positive. Uh, folks um, can continue to stay on their server-based system. Um, we use terms like server in the closet, and we'll see that in a couple more slides. Um, and it really kind of depends on each of the businesses and their mindset, their directives, their short and long-term goals. So let's take a few of those. What happens if you don't move well? Uh, certainly with our servers based perpetual licensing models um, and, and, and SQL databases and servers, we can clearly within a few years be on an unsupported system. Uh, unsupported systems from a hardware perspective, unsupported systems from a software perspective as well. Obviously there are increased maintenance costs um, for any um, system. System we're using is a generic term in most cases, if you are running an ERP system, you have multiple servers. Um, each server has a specific um, purpose. You have a SQL server, terminal servers. Those are all the hardware, right, associated to an environment. Uh, maintenance costs on software as well um, for licensing and upgrades and updates. Certainly on an old system, antiquated system, there's loss of business efficiencies. Um, server-based server systems that you bought and implemented years ago, five years ago, or maybe even more for some of you who are on old versions of GP back in the 7.5 and 8 days, um, clearly the, the systems that you're running today are less efficient. Um, increased technical debt. We, we'll talk a lot about technical debt in, in some slides um, going forward, and we'll kind of define that for you, but really the technical debt associated to uh, having those uh, old servers, old systems, and old software around. Certainly there's an increased disaster recovery cost in today's world and the cloud environment. Uh, disaster recovery is just part of what you get, part of what you have um, with very little uh, additional costs associated to maintaining your environment. And then really the last bullet point here is just missed opportunities. Obviously today's industry and technology is moving so fast uh, that if you don't keep up, if a business doesn't keep up with those technology uh, opportunities, those businesses usually get left behind. We're talking about moving to the cloud, um, specifically for folks who are on, on Microsoft Dynamics GP. And, these are uh, three of, of, of many cloud offerings. Uh, Oracle NetSuite, of course, being one. Um, the Dynamics 365 Business Central, which is Microsoft's um, new cloud version of their uh, mid-market ERP uh, application. And then Microsoft Azure. Uh, Azure being you know, one of the largest, uh, if not the largest um, cloud provider, again, provided by Microsoft. Um, you'll notice that um, even with Microsoft and Oracle, these are large organizations um, that are providing ERP solutions for mid-market um, as well as enterprise level markets, but we're concentrating on the mid-market. Um, and these are companies who've been around a long time and, and aren't going anywhere. So um, from an ERP perspective, uh, these are um, our ERP offerings here at FMT obviously according in addition to the, the GP application that everybody is familiar with. So five ways of moving to the cloud um, helps your business today. Um, we'll look at some of these items uh, and, and they'll be broken up into a couple of different slide decks and we're really gonna concentrate on, on some major areas here. Um, so we'll concentrate on optimizing a user interface. We'll talk about reduction of that technical debt as we spoke about before. We'll talk about faster value realization. We'll also talk about accelerated decision making. And then finally at the end, we'll talk about some cybersecurity and, and some of the advantages of cloud-based applications in, in the area of security. So optimized user interface. Really here, 
Um, what we're talking about is, you know, three major bullet points, and, and there are many. Uh, increased adoption for the users, the productivity that you get from that adoption, and then from that productivity, that accurate data. All businesses want accurate data. They want to be able to report on accurate data in a timely fashion. Um, so one of the um, specific ideas here when moving to the cloud is really that optimized user interface. That user interface, a, a fancy way of saying, you know, how does it look? Is it easy to manipulate? Is it easy to navigate, you know, through the screens, one screen after another? Is, is the cloud-based system a tabular style uh, or is it a window on top of a window on top of a window style? And, and all of those have pros and cons and, the, and they all have different um, user adoption effects depending on your organization and the folks who are working within your ERP system. Um, this goes to not only accountants within the accounting side, but as we um, push the ERP system or solution out to the folks on the warehouse or a sales team, uh, customer service teams, all of those teams who are actually using the application, they all have different sort of adoption capabilities. And um, we wanna make sure that this cloud-based system meets all of their requirements. That intuitive, intuitiveness, right, um, can make it a dramatic impact on the success of the ERP implementation. Um, if you are coming from a QuickBooks uh, implementation or if you're coming from another server-based application, um, moving to a cloud-based application may, may not be that dramatic. Um, but from a GP perspective, um, we know that the GP application that we're using today uh, and most likely is, is substantially different than, this, than these cloud-based offerings that um, we see today in the marketplace. Things, um, obviously the adoption, it reduces uh, you know, the time to get things done. It increases that productivity. Um, there's less workarounds, right? The tasks get done within a specific amount of time uh, and that, that, re that demand for that tribal knowledge gets reduced. The system, the cloud-based system and its relationships with all of the different modules is what holds the knowledge, right? The, the users have an interface that's easy to use um, and they can navigate through it within a relatively short period of time. Under that productivity, um, for example, um, salesforce.com, which is a, obviously a CRM application that we also here at FMT um, support, uh, one of their uh, white papers came out and said it, it boasts a 41% increase in the productivity by shifting from their classic user interface to their new lightning interface. So that's, this isn't an ERP system, but just a testimonial of, of an application that's been in the marketplace for a long time and just a change in the user interface has boasted a 41% increase. That's a, that's a big increase from a productivity perspective. Uh, ERP systems follow the same way. It's game changing, right? It's, it's moving to a modern cloud-based system that is more productive, easy to adopt, and ultimately relies, uh, and relies on the accurate data that we get. We talked about the technical debt, right? A, a fancy way of really, of really saying, you know, how much cost or debt does it really take um, to stay on uh, an old antiquated system? Uh, and more importantly, how much is reduced by moving to a cloud-based system? This technical debt sometimes is difficult to quantify, right? Um, the bullet points here that we show are, um, some of these are, are relatively clear, right? There's no more servers in the closet. Um, we know that um, buying servers, maintaining servers, in addition to the, to the outlay of cash to buy that hardware, right? We have to pay rent to serve them. We have to heat them, cool them. Um, we have to maintain an area for them. Uh, and that's just the, the mechanical parts of those servers in the closet, right? Um, 
from the technical cost perspective, now we're talking about human capital, right? The, the amount of money it takes to maintain servers, IT folks who monitor them, or even the software that they buy to monitor those servers to maintain and make sure that they're optimized to the best of their ability. So that technical cost savings is in human capital and costs, and payroll, as well as some software and hardware costs. There's an analogy if we if we take a look at you know owning an older car that's less predictable, um, but for certainly has a lower cost, maybe a no monthly cost um, associated to comparing to leasing a brand new vehicle, right? Um, the expense you know, monthly is is certainly can be offset if there is some sort of expense of repair, maybe a transmission or something. Um, so just maintaining an older system, just like maintaining an older vehicle, can have additional costs associated to it. The key or the question is, is do those um, additional costs that pop up from time to time, are they greater than the cost associated to a maintaining a new car or the lease payment associated to uh, or the rent associated to a new vehicle? Some of these questions aren't easily uh, obtained and, and determined. Certainly every business has their own set of, of questions that they need to ask themselves about technical debt, but the key to it is, is to make sure that it's not just today's costs, it's tomorrow's costs, right? Understanding the future of owning that older vehicle versus the future of owning uh, a new um, leased car, or in this case, a cloud-based ERP system. The technical debt is, is sometimes um, tricky to be able to capture, um, but we know that the technology is constantly changing technology costs are always being reduced, yet the cost to repair, the cost to maintain old uh, antiquated uh, systems don't seem to be reduced at all. Um, improving the change management. Um, so change management obviously is included in any time that we contemplate moving ERP systems or uh, implementing a new ERP system, whether they're cloud-based or um, server-based, and with server-based systems, there's a, there's an amount of overhead that's included in change management. Cloud-based systems, uh, their change management costs are substantially reduced. Those are folks who have a a formal change management system today in their in their environment still have to go through the paperwork and get signs and wet signatures just as we would expect. Um, regardless of cloud or server-based, but the ability for cloud-based systems to be regulated, to have uh, regulated SLAs um, and different life cycles of their product, um, which kind of moves to that regular system updates, are seamless in many cases, right? The rollout of a cloud-based application becomes um, a couple clicks uh, from a system administrator um, and if that change management is required, there's still an opportunity to do that testing and validation before the new updates arrive in everybody's um, workspace. So these are just a, a few examples of, of that reduction in that technical debt. Um, your business, will you'll find your own list um, and add it to our list of, of items. Faster value realization. Here, you know, whether it's an ERP or CRM system, uh, the valuation or the value is not recognized until after you start using it, right? So how do we get and how do we implement, um, how does our decision-making process faster so that once we start putting an outlay of cash or capital, we're able to realize that value sooner? This, again, many automobile kind of analogies here, um, but imagine uh, you're driving a car to work and it gets 14 miles to the gallon, you have a 60 mile day commute, right? Tired of having such of those high commuter costs or that server-based application, you decide to buy a Tesla, right? Teslas are becoming 
more and more common nowadays, it seems. But ignoring the cost of the charging, right, the electricity associated to it and other maintenance for now, that's 100% reduction in commuter cost. The cost of that miles per gallon goes to zero. It's a nice car, right? It's a beautiful car. But if you don't decide to drive it, or you only drive it one day out of the week, how much savings do you actually get? How fast do you realize your value? Well, the least amount of time that you use that vehicle, the slower the value realization. To the point where, as we spoke about previously, if we don't have that, um, that increase in adoption and that productivity and the users aren't using the system at all, well, that's like not driving your, your fancy new Tesla. You, you don't get to realize um, that value. Um, so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we get, you know, fingers to the keyboard faster, right? Um, that's a way to realize. So again, part of that adoption. Um, for us to move fast and get that value realized, there's less infrastructure set up on a server-based, uh, sorry, a cloud-based application versus the server. What you can do, what, what takes you maybe several weeks or maybe even three to four weeks of specking out servers, buying lead time from the vendor, the shipment of those servers to either your closet in your office or a co-location, and then hooking them up, get them in a rack, installing, optimizing, all that takes time. In the cloud-based application, that infrastructure is there ready. Um, probably 10 to 15% less time to get an infrastructure set up on a cloud-based uh, solution than it is a server-based solution. So really, that capitalize of the user efficiencies we talked about before and just the adoption, um, that all plays part in that faster value realization. Many of the applications and solutions that we have today have prepackaged solutions. So we've talked about user efficiencies and infrastructure, but if we look at the time it takes to implement these systems, some of these prepackaged solutions allow for a, a shorter implementation time from the consultants that are helping you. Um, that also plays into to factor. If there's a six month implementation um, period of time and a prepackaged solution reduces that by three months, and now you're looking at a three month implementation, well, that, that has cut down the time to go live and realized value within half the amount of time. So a lot of those cloud-based applications have those prepackaged solutions. Another flexibility or fast is really around the licensing. Licensing on cloud-based applications can, can grow or um, be reduced um, as, as the business needs. So now we implement with five users and within a year, um, you know, through acquisition or organic growth, that grows to 10 users. Well, one user a month over a several months, um, that licensing model and that flexibility there grows with the business immediately without having to wait for a specific trigger point on growth based on the business. Um, all of these are ways in which we get faster value realization. Um, the next slides, we're gonna talk about accelerated decision-making um, and then, and much of that accelerated decision making, again, we talked about the speed um, in which we um, get to either realize or the speed in which we reduce. Um, so what we really want to talk about now is that uh, accelerated decision making. This is all about making decisions faster, right? Um, the data is real. The data is valuable. We need to have the data in front of us to be able to make those decisions in a quickly in a quick manner. So, what are the factors of that decision making? Well, certainly, system mobility. Right, uh, today's world moves fast, and and we need to be able to have that data um, access to us at all times. Um, those of us who try to have some sort of work life balance um, may or may not be able to relate to this, but but certainly. Um, the system mobility of having the data at your fingertips, no matter what kind of device we're working from, whether it be a 
tablet or a, or a, or a cell phone. Uh, these cloud-based systems, again, have powerful integrations. Data moving from one application or one system to another, to another, to another. All of this happens in the cloud using uh, APIs, um, happens, can happen in a real-time basis, certainly um, accelerating the data that you have to make uh, quick decisions. Uh, zero downtime. Many of the cloud providers um, tout how they have zero downtime and, and they, I don't think they ever say 100% up, but it's 99.999 .999 or something like that. Um, that downtime really um, hits all the way down to the individual user, right? The, the only um, thing that prohibits a user from being able to access their data um, in a cloud-based system is an, is an internet connection. So as long as we have an internet connection, we're good to go. Uh, some of these uh, newer uh, cloud-based applications have artificial intelligence built into them, sort of like a, a memory where as transactions are being recorded um, throughout the application, either by a specific user or groups of users, the application remembers and in many cases can in advance um, tell the users what their next step can be. Maybe it is um, providing information to the users about a specific customer and what type of products they tend to buy. Um, these are all kind of predictive analysis that are built into this artificial intelligence um, that you know, is, is very prominent now in many of the cloud-based applications. We're gonna really see a lot of artificial intelligence discussions um, in the marketplace um, this year as some of the newer versions of these cloud-based applications get released um, through the rest of the year. These are all, this is all powerful stuff, right? This is all a ways to get our decision-making accelerated and get to the real crux of our, of our business and that is having access to that data. We had mentioned before that one of our last items really in our ways to be able to make better decisions and get data faster is really in, in, in the areas of security. Cybersecurity, again, a, a business and a marketplace all of its own, and all of those, all of our cloud-based systems have some um, many different stories, very many stories of their own about their security systems and how well and secure their data is. We hear in news today about cybersecurity and um, many of the things that are going around in the government, but we expect that each of these providers of the cloud-based applications to spend a lot of money around cybersecurity to be able to secure your data, your data, my data, um, our, our business's data. Um, most of the largest businesses in the world store their data in the cloud. Right? We talked about um, two of those uh, cloud-based providers, the Microsoft uh, and, and the Oracle and NetSuite, but even Amazon and Google um, offer cloud storage services and spend um, a lot of money in, in cybersecurity. There's a quote out um, earlier where um, $30 billion a year in, in cloud computing and cloud storage um, for that industry. That's, that's a huge number, a huge number. And all of our ERP systems are moving towards the cloud and expect this level of security associated to it. Employee access to the data, of course, as we talked about the security, um, employee access is not only from a mobile perspective, um, and certainly we have an adoption understanding as well, um, but the ability to connect um, employee to employee through the data, through the ERP, through that application um, allows for immediate information um, to be transferred between the ERPs and, and any of the collaboration tools um, that, that we know today in the marketplace. The data, the, the data access to the data by these users um, and by the you folks with, that are in this call 
the C level folks really is the key and you have to have that data secure it's your business right it's your business's data and so under current security standards through the web uh, there are you know many different um, global platforms you know single sign on two factor authentication these are all things that um, from an IT world and a cybersecurity world have become just second nature to many of the cloud applications. So today we have all of those available um, measures for security in the cyber world. When it comes to standards um, improving, you know, the larger uh, businesses are, are all managing their data in, in the cloud. Um, and that's and that's really what the security is for, and that's and it and it does exactly what what it's meant to do. Um, accountants of the old were very um, hesitant to bring their data into the cloud um, a decade ago. I think the conservative folks um, are now getting on board with cloud computing, cloud um, ERP systems, and are, are much more comfortable today than they were um, a ways ago. Just a highlight from an industry, the cloud storage market um, expected to grow uh, to 30.7 billion in 2017 to 88.9 billion by 2022. A very large growth in this market and we're seeing it in, in our cloud-based um, ERP applications. Just uh, some others, uh, other testimonials across some of um, some clients that we worked with before. Uh, following the deployment of FMT services, EcoArc Holdings realized an increase in business process efficiency, improved performance, and improved data protection. It's from EcoArc, um, a client of ours who have many different services that, uh, or take care of many of the services that FMT provides, and specifically around um, data protection and IT infrastructure services as well. So we talked about the things that we needed to do and, and ask ourselves, but now really want to look at what to watch out for. So some common mistakes, um, really failing to assess. Um, we say assess, whether that's internally, right? Assessing what your specific needs and requirements are um, with regards to a new ERP. Uh, one is really is unrealistic expectations. This isn't a small uh, measure. Uh, implementing an ERP system, deciding to move to the cloud are, are big questions and big, big projects for many of the businesses, right? So we want to make sure that we have unrealistic expectations are, uh, are realized. And in addition to that, we're prioritizing those exceptions, right? We need to prioritize the expectation of what it takes to get it done. Um, we certainly don't recommend going it alone. Um, that's what FMT is here for. Uh, we're here to help you know help you assess um, not only today's requirements but tomorrow's. Set up that roadmap for you to make sure that as we contemplate moving from a server-based uh, application to a cloud-based, um, that we have all of your requirements. We also want to do it um, and help you from a project management perspective. Uh, making sure that the teams, um, your internal team as our team is, has some sort of leadership um, to keep us all on track. So really assess where you are today, uh, assess where you want to be in the future. Um, these, are, these are bullet points and these are things that really need to be contemplated by each of the businesses. So we ask our question, are we ready to move? Um, some some bullet points to understand if we're ready or not. So what's most important now into the future? We asked that question earlier. Um, you've identified maybe some high level requirements. Do those requirements change from today to out three years to five years? Maybe your business is growing through acquisition and you have on the horizon to acquire two or three businesses a year. Well, those, those things are, are great to know, important to know, as we contemplate um, a cloud-based application. We certainly want to know other things that are important, maybe to the C-level teams. Are we looking for dashboards? Do we need uh, process changes for efficiencies? 
Um, many times we look to the implementation of an ERP system to help with those business process changes to make it more effective and more efficient. Um, during the implementation is the time to relook at the, those um, SOPs, as an example. We talked about that in the key business processes in a couple of bullying towns, but really want to make sure that um, we all understand what our future holds. Capacity and capability, two different things. Capacity, do we know what our capacity is? Do we have a team? Are there folks available to spend a dedicated amount of time? Um, obviously, moving to an ERP system requires a team on the client side, your side, it, it obviously includes a team on the consulting side. Uh, and, and you all have a regular job to do. In most cases, it's 40 hours or more. So do you have folks who have capacity to be able to make uh, a change um, to an ERP system in the cloud? Capability of change. Really need to look at the individual users and the folks who are required to touch the system, to be able to have fingers to a keyboard. Do they have the capability of change? Um, are they, do they have the right skill sets? Do they have the right mindsets? Change is tough, right? Everybody has issues with change um, and it just needs to be managed. Um, and understood within your organization, what, what are the folks' ability on your teams to be able to um, manage that change? What is their threshold? Certainly documenting key business processes is, is a great support uh, and thing to think about. Um, some of you may already have processes built today, um, SOPs as they're called, uh, but if not, um, during this time of, of of review of whether or not we're going to move to a cloud-based system, now would be the time to incorporate those um, written documents um, that, that identify not every single process that you do, not necessarily every keystroke that you make within the ERP system today, but, but key business processes that will, we can focus on efficiencies to um, make your data flow faster and, and be able to realize that um, value quicker. Partner with your partner. Most of you on the phone um, have, have a Microsoft partner today. It may be FMT, it may not be, but you really wanna make sure that you incorporate your partner into your process. Um, even if it's just as a, as a consultative um, and, and a call saying, hey, we're, we're about to talk about moving ERPs and we're really looking at the cloud, bringing us in um, from the get-go so that we can help you navigate through many of the things we talked about today in today's webinar, but, but some of the details that we haven't um, unleashed through this webinar. Really, the partner is there um, to help you. And if your current partner isn't available to help you and assess and help you assess your needs um, for today's ERP or tomorrow's, um, whether it's a server-based or a cloud-based application, um, certainly you know, reach, reach out to FMT for that support. Uh, shameless plug, um, if you need some help, we're here. Um, I said, we, we've, I've been doing this for more than nine years at FMT and another few years before that. We have teams of individuals um, within the Microsoft ERP team, uh, teams of individuals within the, under the FMT umbrella who, who all have um, very many years of, of experience in understanding businesses and business processes first, regardless of which uh, cloud-based ERP system that you're interested in. So reach out. Just a quick recap. Uh, at the beginning of the webinar, we discussed, you know, what happens if you don't move when we talked about a few of those things. Um, five ways of, of moving helps your business. What are those things that uh, we get from moving to a cloud-based application? We also talked about how ready are you to move? Have we looked at our personnel, the folks who use the ERP system? Do we have the time? Does the timeline fit this year or next year? Are there any roadblocks associated to the business's timeline, acquisitions or other things that would prohibit or maybe even slow down an implementation of a new ERP system. We also talked about common mistakes and, and how to avoid them. Uh, many of those things that we talked about, uh, you know, really the failing to assess our own uh, internal needs um, and making sure that we don't, 
the clients don't do it alone. They reach out to their partners um, and partner with their partners. And, and certainly um, next steps, which is reach out uh, to FMT. Our last um, plug for FMT, another testimonial from a client of ours. Um, after two years of constant problems and interruptions with our ERP system, FMT has changed it to be a manageable and predictable process. We can focus on the features that will improve our efficiency now and that the system is stable and reliable. Um, RIS retail inkjet system. Um, they, um, much like many of us, I think, in the industry, uh, had a system that that was kind of piecemeal together, and it really didn't have a, an overall um, roadmap um, and plan for for their uh, environment, or their system, um, not just the ERP system, but all the integrations associated to e-commerce e and and other platforms. And so, um, again, with a large group like FMT and understanding of business processes, we're able to help uh, RIS um, achieve their goals. That's the end of the webinar. Um, we thank you. Um, and now, uh, are there any questions that we can uh, take care of and answer? Uh, I think Troy um, is managing the uh, chat box, um, so we'll we'll ask for Troy to join in and and see if there's any uh, questions that that need to be answered. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, thank you for going over that. We do have a couple of questions, and it looks like Ray, you've got one, so you can um, if you want to kind of toss that into the question box or throw that into the chat, uh, we'll get you, um, and then we will uh, more than happily address your question. We've got a couple here that I'm going to go ahead and throw out there while we're waiting for that to pipe through. Um, and it has to do with when you were talking about the, the three cloud systems that you mentioned. Uh, I think the ones that you mentioned were uh, NetSuite, Business Central, and then Azure. And is there one or is there one that is easier to move to from GP? You know, my team's on GP, and I'm going to kind of fill in the gap here in the questions, but my guess is that they're on GP, their team is comfortable with GP, is there one that's um, easier to move to from there? Good question. Yes. Um, so, yes, the, the folks who are running GP today are, um, are used to that interface. They're used to the Windows. Um, the different cloud offerings, NetSuite being obviously an Oracle um, product, um, has its own set of uh, interface and, and a very uh, unique style. The Microsoft Business Central, again, cloud-based application, um, has its own style, although Microsoft. So for those folks who um, enjoy or are familiar with the GP style of user interface, uh, the option for the for those folks are to host their uh, application in Azure, Microsoft Azure being Microsoft's cloud offering, um, and and what that gives the user or the business is to be able to store, um, have uh, their server-based application be hosted. Uh, from the user's perspective, the access to the um, to their Windows is very similar to, to probably how they're accessing it now if they are using a terminal server or Citrix. Um, if they're using a GP application that's uh, installed locally on their computer, obviously the access will be a little bit different, but that Azure environment um, specifically makes sense during an upgrade of the application um, where, where the user interface um, does not change at all. So it keeps it very comfortable. The adoption remains high for those users as opposed to moving to a, a, a totally new user interface from a cloud application. Okay, great. Hopefully that answers the question. If it didn't answer the question, feel free to jump on in. Um, but it sounds like by moving to Azure, you are actually able to maintain the same user interface um, got a few more questions piping in. Luis, I can see that your hand is raised, but I haven't seen a question come through. So if you want to put that in the box, go ahead and 
type that in there. And Ray, yours came through, uh, which is a great question. Where, where do you see, Chris, GP legacy clients migrating to? Um, awesome question. Love to get your thoughts on that, Chris. Yeah, good question. Um, so, so what we're seeing is um, for GP clients who are on older versions that would normally be ready for an upgrade, um, many of those clients are looking to the cloud offerings, right? Instead of upgrading on the ser on a server-based application, they're looking to that cloud. Um, if they're still Microsoft House or Microsoft client, they tend to go to the Business Central um, Microsoft cloud-based application. If they are uh, not Microsoft-centric, then, then we see those folks moving to the NetSuite cloud offerings. Um, but as I stated before, there's still a group of folks, um, GP clients, who, who just want to maintain their tried and true GP application. And so as they decide to upgrade that GP server-based application, instead of um, upgrading it in the server closet, they move that to the Microsoft um, Azure cloud. All right, wonderful, Chris, thanks. Uh, Ray, feel free to pipe in if you've got any follow-up questions on that. Love to make sure we get in as many of your questions answered as possible. Uh, Peter, moving on to you, you've got a great question here. So Chris, Peter is in the midst of a high jump barcode data collection implementation. Uh, having gone through those before, I know how much of the work that is personally. Uh, but his question is, are there additional considerations in moving from our on-premise solution to Azure um, kind of in the mix of that data collection implementation? Yeah, gr great question. Um, there's always a concern when we are adding ISVs or apps or third-party products into an ERP application, whether that's the server-based application GP as, as Peter's on, or, or even if it's a cloud-based application. Um, the, the key is really about the, the um, compatibility between the third-party product, or in this case, the high jump barcode data collection uh, system and, and what the new application is going to be. So um, much less of a concern moving GP to Azure and maintaining that server-based application in Azure um, than it would be from moving that GP server-based application to either Business Central or NetSuite, um, that purely cloud. Um, you can always expect, though, that regardless of which route you take, whether it's GP to GP in Azure or GP to Business Central or GP to NetSuite, there's still going to be some additional costs associated to um, moving um, or reconfiguring, in many cases, that third-party product, in this case, the high jump barcode data collection, um, to the new environment. All right, wonderful. Uh, Peter, hopefully that answered your question. If you do have some follow-ups on that, feel free to um, you know, just chime in. We'll answer any of them that we can here this morning. Uh, next, Foster, you've got a great question as well, and this one comes up a lot in our space. And Foster's question is, Chris, we have several customizations that were made to GP. And the question is, how customizable is Dynamics 365? And Foster, just for clarification, that is uh, Business Central, correct? Um, but that is the question at this point in time, Chris. Yeah. So customizations come in several different fashions um, in the GP application. Um, there's customizations to reports. There's customizations to windows. Um, and then... Um, there'd be custom integrations, right? Either bringing data into GP or pulling data out of GP, and all those can be considered customizations. Um, how customized is Dynamics 365 Business Central? Um, it it has its own sort of um, defining um, or or definition of of customize. And many times. The customize word is used in conjunction with configure, another C word. Um, but in, in the Business Central world, um, a user's window um, or a user interface is, is customized or personalized. Um, and that's moving things around um, 
uh, from from where the windows, the, the, the cells, the look and feel. Um, customizing the application specifically um, through a development process um, is, it can be done. Um, it depends on whether or not um, we FMT or you or the other VARs associated have the capability and understanding of that specific application um, code. In this case, Business Central um, working from the Microsoft NAV or Navision code um, at the server-based application, now moving that code into the cloud. So um, how, how customized it is, it's as customizable as, as any other application as long as one understands um, the source code. That, thanks, and Foster actually followed up with some additional data on that. Thanks for that follow-up, Foster. And it's basically, he generates PDFs instead of Word documents um, inside of GP. And my guess about the customization is making G, uh, Business Central capable of kicking out those PDFs as well. Yeah, similar functionality within the Business Central application, um, within just, and, and I'm not using customize, I'm using configure. Uh, configuring those um, documents, uh, forms, or reports, if you will, to be uh, exported or printed to, if you will, a PDF um, file type instead of a Word doc. So that's all configurable within the application. Okay, perfect. And then just, and I'm going to kind of chime in here, Foster, and if this will add value. And Chris, keep me honest here because you know the products way better than I do. But as the ERPs have evolved from the on-premise solutions onto the cloud solutions, a lot of things that used to require customization have really, to your point, become more configurable. Is that a fair statement, Chris? It is, it is, yes. Um, and, and when we say configurable, we, we mean not only from a consultant who's implementing the application, but in many cases down to the individual user can configure their own workspace or their homepage or the dashboard um, that they uh, look at every single time that they log into the application. Wonderful, uh, perfect, thanks for that, Chris. And we've got another follow-up question from Ray here. Um, and Ray, your question is, of NetSuite, Azure, and GP Dynamics, which ERP platform supports robust planning and reporting such as host analytics or adaptive analytics? Um, great question. Chris, can you provide some color on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so the robust planning and reporting is host and adaptive. Um, those are web-based or cloud-based applications themselves. So it would, it would tend to say that, hey, if I have a planning and reporting tool that is, that is web-based, that it would work better with a web or a cloud-based application like NetSuite um, or Business Central, um, which is still true, but those two reporting uh, tools um, work uh, through Azure as a GP um, hosted. Um, it, they work today in a GP on-premise solution as well. Um, other planning and reporting tools um, that weren't listed is, uh, in addition to host analytics and adaptive would be um, Solver BI 360, which also works um, on both server-based as well as cloud-based, um, and uh, Jet, uh, Jet Reports um, as well. So another um, server or cloud-based um, reporting tool. Wonderful, and Ray, thanks for clarifying that it was adaptive insights as opposed to adaptive right. uh, analytics. I think Chris jumped on that faster than I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, and along with that too, and, and Chris, keep me honest here to make sure that it applies to this question, but Power BI also would fit into that area where if you have the you know resources for developing those reports and working with those data sets in house, um, or have a partner that can support you, Power BI can actually bridge a lot of that gap as well, regardless of the platform that you're using. Um, would that be that, a fair statement? That, yeah, that is correct. Just from, for clarity perspective, right? Power BI being the Microsoft um, dashboard data center, data warehouse tool that, as Troy said, can pull data from many different systems or many different environments and, and present them in one unified place um, versus solver um, 
BI 360, um, which is a different uh, reporting, financial reporting and data warehouse tool. So yes, any, any of the tools, the reporting tools that maintain a data warehouse concept uh, or functionality allow for data to reside in one place coming from multiple systems, whether they are server-based or cloud-based. Cool, yeah, and with that, um, and I guess this is, you know, forgive me for jumping in here, a shameless plug on Power BI, but we've used it internally here at FMT to do some pretty cool stuff to mitigate some license costs with Salesforce, plug it into our ERP and our project managing and make it all visible across the organization. So it's a, it's pretty remarkable once you move to the cloud, what's capable with some of the other cloud-based applications and integration and so on and so forth. Um, but with that though, guys, it looks like uh, questions are kind of wrapping up here. So if you have any, go ahead and raise your hand and type in the, the question. We'd love to answer it. Otherwise, you can shoot us a note and we can reach out to you. We're going to reach out to you and just kind of follow up and make sure all of your questions are answered. Um, regardless, see if we can support you in any way, shape or form, because at the end of the day, as FMT, that's what we're here for. Um, but otherwise, thank you all very much for showing up. Thank you for the time. And we look forward to talking to you soon. Chris, again, thank you so very much for your time. And uh, everybody have a great rest of the Tuesday. Thanks, everyone, for participating in the webinar.